This is from Scott, who writes... Lisa Nandy seems like a talented political communicator and a loyal member of the shadow cabinet. So why has Keir Starmer demoted her? What is their working relationship like behind the scenes? Yeah, so we had the big Labour reshuffle on Monday. It's been expected for a long time. We've had lots of briefings about it in the past six months or so. The big headline change was that Angela Rayner, uh, the deputy leader of the party, has basically taken over uh, Lisa Nandy's role as shadow levelling up secretary, um, which is in effect a massive demotion for Lisa Nandy, who went to international development minister, which in effect doesn't have a uh, a ministry, a, a department at the moment, because that was scrapped under the Foreign Office and uh, Development Office merger back in 2020. So what you've seen basically is Lisa Nandy go from shadow foreign secretary in the first um, shadow cabinet in, back in 2020 when Keir Starmer was first elected to uh, not being a fully fledged cabinet, a uh, shadow cabinet minister. Yeah, so there are some rumours, I think Kevin Maguire wrote for us this week, that this was a, a gamble that Keir Starmer took, expecting her not to accept the demotion, to sort of step back entirely. We also had uh, Rosina Alan Khan. Mm. Um, who was uh, shadow minister for mental health, which was a full cabinet position. And when it became clear that that position was going to be made a non-cabinet role, she stepped down. So th- there were sort of th- th- an argument that that's what Keir Starmer expected Lisa Nandy to do, to say, I'm not taking that and to quit entirely. She she hasn't. She's She stayed and so she has that development minister role. Um, and I think what you look at when you see the the cabinet reshuffle as a whole is this is the strategy of someone who feels very confident in keeping his party together that the poll ratings for Labour for Keir Starmer have improved to such a degree that he doesn't feel the need to keep everyone happy keep everyone on side he can afford to upset some people and one of those people is Lisa Nandy, who sort of represents the soft left of the party. Obviously, when she was shadow foreign secretary, that was just after the the leadership election um, when she was one of the contenders. And it was about bringing people together and showing that just because she ran against Keir Starmer, that doesn't mean he wouldn't put her in the cabinet. Obviously, a lot has changed in three years and he doesn't feel the, the need to do that anymore. I think there was a sense as well that levelling up is such a... It's a really interesting brief because it's obviously a very new brief, but it touches on so many aspects of British society. You've got social mobility, housing, obviously massive, regional inequality. um, And these are all areas where the Tories should be really, really vulnerable. And there was a sense, I guess, that Lisa Nandy was not making as much of that opportunity as she could have done, whereas Angela Rayner nice meaty brief for her to get her her teeth sunk into. Yeah, I mean, this is a big question, whether Labour will stick with the levelling up agenda. I mean, what do you think, Zoe? I think that they will, because for for the Labour and the Conservatives, the Red Wall especially is such a big part of the base that they're trying to woo. And we saw when um, Boris Johnson won the election back in 2019, part of that was on his kind of Red Wall offering. They see it as something quite substantial, something that the electorate liked the sound of. Um, and as we're seeing, you know, in the in the political and policy backdrop, a lot of sort of crumbling uh, public services and a lot of um, increases in inequalities across regions, I think it would be a good sell to many people to hear that Labour are really taking serious um, the level up agenda and developing those areas. Just to go back to uh, Lisa Nandy, I mean, we saw um, we saw a lot of talk for a long time about a potential label reshuffle. And uh, any talk about reshuffles make people incredibly nervous. So you get a lot of these briefings and counter briefings that come out. And, and some of the briefings we saw was that Lisa Nandy was going to be moved from her post, partly for what you said, Rachel, that um, they felt that she wasn't taking um, making the most out of her brief, but also because there was this talk that maybe she was being disloyal to Keir Starmer. And I think that's something that um, people were talking a lot about and people are still asking now, was she in some way being punished? Is that why she she was she was dropped from her post. I think when you look at what Nandy did for the leveling up um brief. You know, she actually had one of the best offerings in terms of what uh, labor could do which would be radical or radical leaning reform without spending too much money. So, um in the housing brief she pledged planning reform, she was talking about um 
taking advantage of some of the proposals in the Gordon Brown Commission for devolution. These were all things Labour could do to create real change, but without spending a great deal of money. Um, but the question is, was she making the most of that? Was she talking about it enough? Was she selling it to the public? And I think some people would, would suggest that she wasn't. Whether Rayner will do that and carry on with those proposals is a, is a whole new question. But I think those things are, are really important for Labour because it's their best way of selling their vision, which is that Labour can change things, but without spending a great deal of money. Yeah, definitely. I'd completely agree that their housing policy and their devolution policy are the two ways in which they think they can both uh, pursue economic growth and also not spend much money. Just on the levelling up point, I'm, I don't think Labour has spoken that much at all. Anyone really has spoken about um, levelling up that much in the past six months. We had Keir Starmer's big take back control speech uh, in January. Uh, that was when they set out their plans to streamline the devolution process. I don't think Lisa Nandy was even there. She, I, I remember asking her team at the time, I think she, they said she had other commitments. Um, so I don't think she's been the face of the housing and levelling up policy for a very long time. Um, and the other thing worth noting on levelling up is that it doesn't really feature in the five uh, missions, national missions that are going to guide Labour's policy uh, in their manifesto and also in government. Neither does housing. So... The question I pose a few times in, in morning call is, has Labour's levelling up policy basically become a combination of their devolution package and their green prosperity plan? Mm -hmm. Because it strikes me that those are the two things that um, address issues of regional inequality. Um, but they're also speaking about a lot of levelling up, which I think is a, a shame because I do think it got some traction in the, the past two or three years, even if at the start not many people knew what it was. Um, so they reoriented towards these two priorities, which are less focused on regional inequality, but speak to uh, similar themes. The other thing that the reshuffle has done, though, it's not just about Lisa Nandy. It's also about finding a role for Angela Rayner that enabled her to move out of the sort of command centre of Keir Starmer's yeah. cabinet. This but, is the Chancellor of yeah. Lancaster, yeah. Yeah, um, but to not look like a demotion. So obviously she's deputy leader, that's an elected position. He can't get rid of her entirely. The last time that he tried to demote her uh, in 2021, she ended up basically with the promotion, with with more things in, in, in her brief. So I think the starting point for this reshuffle was what can you give Angela Rayner that doesn't look like a demotion that she will accept and uh, be able to capitalise on the opportunities of without um, causing sort of more, more upset uh, while moving her kind of outside of that decision-making centre the decision was was made that that levelling up was a good example, uh, a good opportunity for her to do that, and obviously it gives her her own sort of contained platform, um, which then meant you had to move somebody out of that. So I think like there there might there may have been issues with with Lisa and Andy was she making the most of the brief or or not? But I think the starting point was we need to solve this issue, which is the Angela Rayner issue, and then let's reshuffle everyone else around that. Pat McFadden took over Angela Rayner's role as Shadow Chancellor to the Duchy of Lancaster. Pat McFadden, Tony Blair's former political secretary, uh, quite a well-respected figure within the party, but very much from that Blairite tradition. Uh, so he's going to be the sort of Oliver Dowden version, if they do get into power, managing those Whitehall relationships and trying to drive... Um, policy through the cabinet office. Yeah, it's, it, it's a weird role, isn't it, Chancellor of the Duchess? Like, like I said, it's kind of a um, managing director style role in the cabinet that doesn't have a sort of specific set of issues, but oversees the whole agenda. Yeah, it basically depends what the Prime Minister gives uh, to their Chancellor, the Duchess of Lancaster. Oliver Dowden, very trusted ally of Rishi Sunak, has been given quite a lot, economic security, um, he's looking at Whitehall machinery, all these things. Michael Gove has done the position in the past as well, so he can be a really important uh, role, but it sort of depends on how much power the, the Prime Minister gives out. Mm. I think um, it's it's easy to see uh, Lisa Nandy's demotion as a sort of casualty of this this attempt from Starmer to move his, um, his team into a more sort of a Blairite um, centrism um, and away a little bit from the influence of the soft left. And I think you could easily argue that Lisa Nandy's demotion is just almost collateral damage in that Rayner was, he wanted to keep Rayner there. You know, she's a good face for the union. She's popular. In some ways, she serves a lot of what Nandy serves as well. And in doing so, he had to, you know, make room, give Rayner that brief and, and, and demote Nandy. Thanks so much for watching. We'd love to know what you think. Please make sure you leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this podcast, you can watch more of our videos on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe.